Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to SSG Speaks, the podcast that takes you inside the walls of Camelot. Meet the knights that made sword and shield gaming what it is. So pour yourself a flask of your favorite mead and join us for an inside look at the fine folks that sit at the round table. Hello, folks, and welcome to SSG Speaks. This is going to be episode 10, and today we are going to feature SSG Alias. Alias! There it is. I was waiting for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know that was going to come out. Of course. And see, of course. I, I, I couldn't messed... help but notice you put SSG in front uh, of my name again. I, I already did oh. it, and I already messed up in the, in the pre-show. <laughs> in the pre-show, I messed up when we talked about it. Uh, so, oh, so Alias, how did you get your gamer tag? We'll start with that. Well, that uh, is not really glamorous or anything. I just came <laughs> up with it when I was mowing the lawn one day, and I thought, hey, that sounds kind of cool. And uh, it turns out it's kind of a little Roman sort of name that stands for the sun. And thought, hey, cool, I like that. I- I'll roll with it. So, um, and yeah, there you go. So it wasn't like a word that you had heard before, or you, or like you just no. like kind of came up, came up with parts of it or something, or you just literally. Yeah, just I was thinking of uh, like a Roman sounding names, mm-hmm. and because um, I just kind of like how, the way they flow, and that just came up to me out of the blue, and I like. I'm just like how it kind of rolled off the tongue and kind of how it sounded. Plus, it's really neat because uh, whenever I'm on a list or anything, like your gamer list or anything, I'm near, near the top because it's A and E. <laughs> so um, I thought, and I just like the way it sounded. So I, I stuck with it, and that's I've had that ever since, like getting an email address. I've had it for as long as I can remember, or since I've been online. That was yeah. going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's probably probably it's probably not taken many places, I guess, either, eh? Yeah, and that's the reason why SSG is not in front of my name. Because um, <laughs> you don't want to uh, jacked. Yeah, because I mean, I was the first alias on Xbox Live. I didn't have to put a number or anything or elite speak or anything on it. So I, I'm kind of proud of that. I wanted to keep it just for that reason. That is pretty cool. Yeah. You're, you're one of the few. Yeah. You yeah. Know, we, pe- people go back and forth. You know, we have people that are super excited about you know adding ssg some people don't want to like alias right and that's i came that's close back when i was made a templar mm. i um very tempted but uh i <laughs> i held out i'm stubborn like that just make a second account you can just reserve the ssg alias you could have both there you i go. might do that just use it for ssg only stuff speaking of uh being a templar let's talk about what that means i don't know that we've ever broached that in the uh in the SSG speaks. So, what were you a Templar of? I was the uh, community Templar. So I would, um, you know, get with other uh, gaming groups, particularly those uh, who are part of the GGN, the Good to Games Network, okay. which SSG was also a part of, and um, kind of coordinating um, our weekly game nights and uh, any kind of community inner inner group events like that, and uh, kind of organizing that. And it was really fun uh, at the time. You know, when I was when I had the time to manage everything like that. Ah, <laughs> uh, when we were younger. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that, that's an important position. It's probably one of my one of my favorite ones because you know it, it it did two things. Like you said, like the community aspect of the external community, right? So you would want all of the the mixers and just games that we would organize with the other clans. Like that was cool to get with TTL or OCR. You know, all these people. Um, and organize any kind of event, right? No matter what the game was, uh, but it was also to facilitate kind of intra-night games and stuff like that. So that was that was there was kind of two parts to it, and I was I was really liked that position. Yeah, and that's um, that's the entire reason I joined SSG is because uh, I needed some sort of community to be a part of online that I could just you know, um, and I guess I'm going to backstory here. Uh, of how I found SSG was uh, back when uh, Halo 3 was out. Uh, it was awesome, of course, because I'm a Halo fan. Mm-hmm. But um, Never heard of it. Uh, oh, that's a shame. It's, it's like Halo Reach, but better. Yeah. Oh, oh, shots fired. Shots fired. All right. Okay. Go on. Sorry. Uh, Reach, is among my, so, <laughs> Reach is on my top three list, too, so don't say too much. Good man. Uh, but, yeah, um, and all my Halo 2 buddies disappeared. So I guess they didn't get an Xbox 360 or something. So the multiplayer aspect of Halo 3 was kind of lonely for me. I didn't really have much of a group to play with. So when Halo Reach started, um, you know, getting close to uh, get to coming out, I was thinking, all right, I got to find a group to play with. They're also going to lose my mind because I have no social life with this when I'm working the <laughs> night shift here, which is another story for later. Uh, so I was, you know, checking on the Bungie website as the game was being developed and I say, 
and seeing that they're bringing in a lot of uh, interviews or you know comments from gaming clans, especially the GGN, because uh, TTL was really uh, really close with them. And uh, so I started checking out some of the game groups there, and SSG kind of stood out just because the uh, the Code of Chivalry, as it was called there. Um, basically, this sounded like a really chill group to be a part of. They're not over competitive, which is uh, is actually kind of a turnoff for me because I'm not a competitive guy, and um, just a kind of friendly atmosphere. And so that led me to kind of check you guys out. And next thing I know, I'm uh, like the game is three coming out, and I'm already a member. And I have not looked back ever since. <laughs> so Halo Reach was uh, that's one of the reasons why I love Halo Reach so much is because that's when I got a really prominent gaming community to be a part of oh, when it came out. Man. Nice. The number of hours we put into that game. So much oh fun. yes. Very much so. So you said you played with a lot of people in Halo 2. Was that a clan, or was SSG your first clan experience? Uh, SSG was the first gaming clan experience. I I had friends who tried to get clans together back at uh, Halo 2, but it just nothing stuck. And okay. uh, like we party hardly even uh, together for the most part because our hours are so different. Mm. So uh, I didn't really lose too much, except for maybe you know a couple couple sessions a month or so and that turned into a couple sessions or a couple days worth of uh gaming a week whenever i found the ssg yeah 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 so you guys are awesome nonetheless (laughs) oh shit i i like that i you know i think maybe you know we're getting a lot of these uh, a lot of the people that have answered these questions are from this you know the quote-unquote bungee rush and i i think it's going to be because you guys are all around the same time right time frame of, of showing up so it'll be interesting to see like when this drops off because we're essentially going chronologically from uh from when people uh were inducted into ssg here if people haven't kind of figured that out by now with all these interviews and things like that so um it's nice to go back and see all these you know where these people came from and came from the bungee rush and that that it actually made a difference you know like what we wrote down you know like what like the code of chivalry and or Mm -hmm. you know like our bio right like that the bio was enough that it attracted people even before they even came inside you know the forums or played with any of us right even got to meet us that 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 it made that much of an impact that's that's pretty awesome i like that that was a good uh, good mission statement (laughs) i agree (laughs) to piggyback on what you're saying there jay we went through the first few people and it was the allies for the win and Uh the last few people have been the bungee rush and i'm really interested to see what that next segment is um because it's so far, it's come in like little compartments. Mm-hmm. We know exactly how they're coming, and I'm I'm really intrigued to see what the next uh, next wave is. Because I I really genuinely don't remember. I've always been curious about that too. Because I mean, you think that uh, like there's some big AAA title that's going to bring everyone in, and um, and even we'll come in for uh, like indie titles and stuff like that. Uh, like uh, you think I think Destiny was uh, really big for the group for a while, and mm-hmm. it might still be. I don't play it anymore, but uh, there was a time when uh, we would have. That pr- pretty much replaced Halo for us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was a sad day. Yeah. But well, we still have uh, in- <laughs> Master Chief Collection Nights. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, it's it it's even, you know, I, I think for, for a while it got, you know, separated or fragmented to where, you know, people were almost isolated playing with their own little groups because people wanted to play a game X, Y, and Z. Um, mm-hmm. To where it's that way now, but I feel like now... You know whether because of of discord or i don't know the the maturity of, of the clan at this point but people are are much more likely to they're still playing separate games but they're more likely to reach out or try to bring people into that into that game that they're playing you yeah. know you see people uh like gambit does it um like with the with what is it uh, the fall, fall guys. guys fall guys fall you know, guys um w- Dude, Jay, the fact that you haven't played that yet oh I just bought it last week. I need still need to play it with you guys. Oh, nice. Yes. Let's hey, do it. when when White Wolf plays, I'll play. <laughs> oh, I'll do it. Okay. All right. Is that a deal? I'll make it yeah. happen. Yeah. Okay. You make it happen. I'll I'll play okay. when he plays. So, so are happening. you community templar now? <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of are now that now that you're bringing others, you know, kind of into uh, the gaming fold, as it were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but and then like Wookie's been playing. Uh, there's some game on PC that he's been playing too. That Among I us. See him. Yes. That's a great one, too. Oh, yeah, so, that, that one's really yep. taken off, too. Yeah, you know, so you, you see these little pockets like this, um, and, like, I recently bought the Avengers game when it came out, and I've, you know, been trying to recruit people to play that. And so it's like, 
you we have these pockets, but it seems more uh, people are more invested in these games where they're trying to bring people in and 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 play with the play more you know get well, more yeah. people invested, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. You find a game that you like, you want to yeah. bring your friends. It, it yeah, makes and sense. Uh, you're right, and that's kind of how a lot of like I'm looking at the um, the Jamper channels here, and I'm seeing a. Uh, I'm surprised that Sea of Thieves is still gr- getting uh, interest here after being out for as long as it has, and right. uh, which is awesome because I like that game. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you've played just a little bit, right? Uh, just a little bit, you know, got Legend and all. <laughs> yeah, so you, you definitely <laughs> have, have to have the most time uh, in that game of anybody in SSG, I would think. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm kind of surprised the Anthem channel's still here too, <laughs> come to think of it. Yeah, that one's probably going to be retired. We retired a bunch of channels <laughs> that hadn't been posted in in a year, and that was one that was fairly close. So I think uh, I think that one's kind of gone by the wayside anyway. It's on the uh, chopping yeah. block. Yeah. It's a shame, too, because it came, has so much potential, but then just, like, Bioware dropped all the balls with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, I think where, uh, you know, those those types of games, the, the open-world kind of looter-shooter kind of games, where, you know, Destiny is for sure, and the Division, the Anthem... Uh, style games, even Borderlands to some degree. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where the the Avengers game is, except you get to be an Avenger, which is pretty awesome. Um, well, yeah, I can't you wait get to play that. Get that going for you on your superhero, mm-hmm. so. right? Um, and all the superheroes play different, so you know, on some of those games, you have different styles, right? Like Anthem, I think had different mechs, and the, um, Division didn't really, but Destiny certainly has like the three the three classes that you know they play similar but different. Um, yeah, but, but man, Avengers like. Hulk plays different than Black Widow. Like, it, <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> yeah, so um, okay, you but, sold me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I have to get that one too, huh? Yeah, so it, uh. it's I, I really do, I really do like it. I mean, I, I like that the you know the looter shooter kind of game, but it, it doesn't have the near the investment that something like Destiny does. Like, oh, thank yeah. God. Um, you know, and and I think you know Destiny had to create a whole new world and universe too where if you're dropped into this Avengers mm-hmm. game even if you didn't even play the story or pay attention to the story i mean for the most part if you're playing that game you know who the avengers are right so you're going to oh, have yeah. you're you at least going to have some idea of the story all yeah. the comic books and how many years of movies and tv shows yeah <laughs> right right so most people are going to have a, 12 years of they, movies yeah if they bought the game or you know they're playing a demo or something they're going to have a vague understanding of of what it is so mm. yeah i um, yeah i've been really enjoying it so Oh, that's cool. Well, when I when I pick it up, I'll definitely have to hit you up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, Alias, you are mm-hmm. one of the the longest standing members, um, having never gone emeritus at any point. How many nights have you had an opportunity to meet throughout that time? Uh, in person. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how many were at the Atlanta Land? Because that's the <laughs> that's the only one I was able to go to, and it, it was awesome. I would do totally do it again if I could. Only but yeah, one that I was wasn't the, uh, able to go to. Kills uh, me. That's a shame. <laughs> yeah, Remy and I yeah. were not at, at Atlanta, so. Yeah, I think um, I remember. I can't remember who I was talking on the phone with, but like we were all group grouped in this big old uh, living room, and like I don't know what game we were. It's probably Destiny because the um, the one of the expanses had just coming out that week, so like half the time at a LAN was spent playing a LAN game, and <laughs> um, like you could hear the uh, the rest of the the folks there. Like, I don't know, they were cracking up about something. I, I was just going on the phone saying, but hear that, hear all that fun you're missing? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just one of the one of the highlights of my being a member of SSG was uh, that LAN. And I'm sure the other LANs would have done that too had I attended them, but unfortunately I could not make this. Yeah, if yeah, y'all make another one, let me know. Special. The LANs are something yeah. special, for sure. Absolutely. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to go to two of them. And then had a number of nights show up at my wedding, and it's just oh, hanging yeah. out with with these these people that you've known online for so long is just there's nothing like it. It's incredible. Oh yeah, it's, I, you you finally put a face to the voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you got to do that tonight, Alias. Yeah, that's right. You, hey. I'm seeing you on the webcam, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I, I popped my camera the first time, and so this is what Jay to, looks like. Yeah, he had to immediately cover a screen so he wouldn't see see it anymore. Nah. Uh, I mean, the five o'clock shadow is not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy oh, to me to think that you've never seen what he looks like. We are mysteries yep. until yeah. we, you know, go to a land. Well, and especially <laughs> Alias. I mean, I don't, I don't know that we really have a question for that. But, uh, but one of my favorite things about about doing this is how much you get to learn about the people. And I got to say, you're one of the 
the most private people here. So <laughs> really? it will be uh, it'll, it'll be nice to, to get you out of your shell a little bit and, and get to talk. Yeah, I am extremely uh, uh, introverted, so that has much to do with that. But um, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to join a group like this because I I needed to get out of my shell. I needed to you know talk to people. I needed to because at the time I worked the night shift. I was working noon to uh, noon to 10 p.m., which is exactly when our uh, Monday Night Halo game started, thankfully. Mm-hmm. And that was the only social interaction I got other than, you know, maybe going to church and, uh, you know, hanging out with my Sunday school group. But uh, other than that, that was that was it. So um, hmm. that's uh, one of the other reasons why I, uh, like, enjoyed my time being a part of this so much is because uh, I uh, had a chance to, you know, talk to people and uh, hang out, even if it was through uh, an Internet connection. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then you even, you know, branched out enough to be the community of Templar. So I feel like that, that says something about you know character oh absolutely least. yeah and that's uh yeah i um uh, that's an opportunity that i i wanted to jump at because that again that helped me uh you know come out of my shell or helped me make contacts helped me uh get get in touch with people that i don't normally talk with you know and tell them hey uh why don't we just like we'll do a social thing here uh, come on down and join us that sort of thing well yeah we really appreciate it and it's, it's definitely a job that that we need here so we like that so would you say that that the community of Templar or something else was your most memorable time here at SSG then? Oh, that uh, <laughs> there's a lot to go over there. I would have to say um, I can think of three uh, three distinct things, but I mean, there's this is among tons of others, so there's no like top ten list or anything because there's so many to choose from. Sure. But uh, you know the Reach Nights, those are always awesome. Um, yeah. The land, of course, because, you know, it was a land, and that was uh, amazing to, you know, meet everyone in person. And we still play video games, but it was in person this time. And um, actually, I had uh, a lot of fond memories of our Gears of War 3 Horde Nights. Mm. <laughs> and uh, those were really fun to uh, organize and put together just because um, I think I re-upped that game like three different times just because we played so often. And I never <laughs> devoted that much time to a game, maybe, except maybe Halo Reach, of course, but yeah. And that was really cool that we had a dedicated, uh, you know, a re- regular group to play not just Halo Reach, but also Gears 3 and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back back in the day we had, um, I'm sure we've mentioned it before, but we had the Monday Night Halo, um, which has always been a staple of SSG in, until the last few years now that Halo's not what it was, at least with us. But the uh, yeah. but we had Wednesday Night Warfare. We had, what was it, Thursday Night Horde? Was it Thursday? Yeah, it was Thursdays. I, I made yeah. the logo for that. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then we had Tuesday Teamwork or s- something like that, I think, yeah, which was co-op you're right. and That Minecraft. was for co-op games. Yeah, yeah it was uh, like Minecraft and um, mm-hmm. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer when it was out. And, I and there was game. a group of us doing uh, Battleborn on Tuesday nights. That's oh, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Overwatch came out and ruined it. So. Yeah. <laughs> which I can't say much because I like Overwatch a lot, so... Yeah. Well, they're both great games, but they they were so unfairly compared. They're nothing like each other. I, I <laughs> That's agree. ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. Why they were compared with each other? Yeah. Because they came out at yeah. the same time. Uh, they were kind of targeting okay. the same audiences. Yeah. And that's yeah. Why people they thought that it was the this. same game essentially. Yeah. Okay. They they made this artificial turf war just to bring up uh, you know interest. Yeah. So. Never mind that Battleborn had a campaign, but you know yeah. whatever. I'm not bitter about it. Well, Battle, Battleborn's a <laughs> Moab, isn't it, though? Uh, that's part of it, yeah. There's okay. that. Um, there there are a lot of game modes that... Uh, one of them is Moab. One of them is kind of CTF style. One of them. And then there's a campaign, a full campaign storyline that you can get more characters and yada yada, etc. So it's just... It's a, it's a stellar game. I really, truly enjoy that game. Yeah. And sad that it died an early death. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Gearbox. Does Gearbox make that? Yeah, yeah. I was hoping to see some of the uh, when Borderlands Three was coming out. I was hoping to see some guest stars. <clears throat> excuse me, guest stars from Battleborn in the Borderlands universe because they totally fit. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that that didn't, that didn't happen. That was a perfect opportunity there. Yeah, it would have been a great opportunity to use some characters that were underused. Mm-hmm. Or at least cameos. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm surprised but, more more. Um, studios don't do like a nintendo you know where they have like a smash brother type thing where they ha- include all oh, the characters God, you know yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, ah. Sony did do that once. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. And um, I mean, actually, Sonic I remember. Racing. Yeah, and even before that, Sega had a, a Saturn game. It was a, it was a fighting game based on the Virtual Fighter engine, but they had uh, like different mm. franchises, like uh, Sonic Fighters coming in. They even had the um, the Daytona USA car as a fighter in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Must have missed that so, one. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I never had a Saturn, but I saw you know the uh, reviews for it and stuff like that. So. That's funny. Um, so, what do you do for work, Alias? I am a librarian, and uh, oh, I love okay. my job. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm, I would I'm too. kind of a bad librarian though because I don't read as much as you think a librarian would. I'm more of a collector. <laughs> I'm trying to fix that, but yeah, I, uh, my my shelf is packed with books that are still waiting to be read. What was the last wonderful book that you read? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Because no, I've read a couple in the past couple of years, but they're all kind of mashing together right now. <laughs> well, we can come back to that. No worries. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, other than books, were you? You know, we uh, were just talking about the uh, Marvel and stuff. Were you? Are you into comics, or have you been into comics? It's kind of ironic. I love the movies, and I've tried to get into the comics, but uh, I um, there's just so much to take in that uh, I was never able to. I'm a completionist. I'm the kind of guy that has to start mm. from the beginning of any kind of story. Yep. And uh, that's yeah, good luck that kind that. of a <laughs> yeah, that kind of a <laughs> threw me off. I know you even tried coming in like uh, when they did the Ultimates and stuff like that, but um, I had a hard time keeping up with it. But uh, the movies are a little bit easier to keep up with because they have a slower uh, production cycle. So yeah, slightly. my DVD shelf has like every Marvel Universe movie out there, a couple of X-Men's and stuff like that. And I kept up with the X-Men cartoon back when it was out, so there is that. Ooh, such a good My wife and I are re-watching that right now. Ooh, yeah, nice. I need to. It's I've added Disney it to Plus. my Disney Plus list, so I'm going <laughs> to yeah. get back to oh. binging that soon. Is it, it's in Disney? It's on Disney Plus? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Ooh, yep. nice. It absolutely is. I was watching Man. it the other day. Oh, yeah. The, the week-long Dark Phoenix saga is <laughs> That was <laughs> amazing. Yeah. That was Much fantastic. Oh, I loved how so they good. took such epic stories and condensed them down to like two episodes. Right. And, yeah. And they, they hit the and major points. Well. It, enough. They did it yeah, well. But they, it, they did it well enough it, to know what you're talking about. You can go into a conversation right. and know what you're talking about when it comes to the Age of Apocalypse or something of that nature. Right. They, mm-hmm. It was... Very hash job, but it was uh, it was fun. Oh yeah, Good. and I remember. In fact, I'm showing my age here, but I remember how uh, Fox TV back when it was you know syndicated on air, how they mm-hmm. hyped up the Phoenix Saga. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. I kept on trying to tune in to watch that and make sure I didn't miss anything there. Yep, and that aired was really just cool after that, Spider Man. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. At it, it uh, Spider Man was at three thirty and X Men was at four o'clock. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever watched any of the Spider-Man. I mean, I've, I've watched oh. a lot now. Oh, it's so I've watched good. a couple of them, but I never really got the Spider-Man, Spider-Man as much as I did uh, the other heroes like X-Men and Batman and all that. What what was the the Spider-Man comic, you know, the one that has all the memes and GIFs, you know, like the pointing Spider-Mans and things like that? Is is that from like oh. the 50s or 60s? Is that Yeah, yeah that's like from really the 60s sure it is. cartoon. Yeah, yeah 60s. Okay. Uh, I think 66, 67. I could be mistaken on that. Oh wow, but, that that predates uh, West, huh? Spidey's I been around for that. a while. Well, I yeah. know he's been around a while. I just didn't know that the series has been around that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could be mistaken and on the, the cartoon, year. Don't don't so. quote me on that. But uh, yeah, I, it, I know it was definitely in the '60s. Huh? Okay, cool. It was a, yeah, Spidey's a Spidey's a Marvel staple. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, from the get go. That I do know. But I think it's funny that uh, Iron Man before 2008, before that movie released, he was an unknown. He yeah, was, I, he was very much an underdog hero. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how it went out like that. Yeah. In fact, I remember um, when they were talking about uh, the Marvel Studios, like becoming a professional movie studio and choosing Iron Man as their first villain, and, and some of the media uh, covering the productions was like, seriously, they're choosing Iron Man? It's like Marvel's B grade hero, and then next thing you know, he's the most popular in the entire. MCU. It's Iron Man, dude. <laughs> because uh, Robert Downey Jr. sells the part. I'll tell you that. He was oh, a big part of it. Oh, sure. man. He is Tony he is, Stark. He is absolutely Tony Stark. Yeah. That, that also part Iron was made for him. Yeah, well, he, he is Iron Man. I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I was in a, a, a forum community back in 2007 when that was announced. Um, it was called, called Ironworks. Oh. And uh, we were, dude, we were, we were in a fervor eating up every <laughs> scrap of information because it was the first big like we were big Iron Man fans um, 
Oh, so good. Uh, you were not disappointed, <laughs> I'm sure. Did you have your tattoo at that point? Uh, no, the tattoo actually I got a couple weeks after the movie released because the oh, nice. tattoo artist couldn't uh, couldn't get me before then. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't think I've seen that one yet. I've seen your oh, uh, yeah. the ones on your arm. Um, yeah. I got a big old arc reactor in the middle of my chest. That is awesome. It's it's probably the coolest tattoo you could have. It, it's pretty awesome. No, oh, yeah. I love it. You're love you're it. braver than I, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. If, had I known how a chest tattoo on your sternum would feel, ooh, I, you know, <laughs> I, I I might have had second thoughts, but I'm glad I have it, and I'm glad that's in the past. <laughs> yeah, oh, not a, not a lot of fat or muscle there. It's pretty much right. No, there it's yeah, yeah. It's it's about pretty much five hours of your neck feeling like it's on fire. Oh man. So, yeah, enjoy, uh, if you ever want to get a sternum tattoo. I don't think I will. No, I don't I, blame I, you. <laughs> pain is not my thing. <laughs> uh, well, so if, if tattoos aren't, aren't your thing, what uh, what kind of hobbies are you into? Uh, aside from video games, of yep. course. Well, um, I do like writing. Uh, I've, I've mentioned uh, writing a couple times in the forums, and I've actually been published a couple times. Oh, nice. No kidding. got my stories in some anthologies. And I'm um, in the process of getting some novels written out. Um, one is pretty much ready to go. I'm just looking for a publisher. And I got another one. Uh, it was it was actually my first one. I wrote it way, way, about 10 years ago, actually. Man, that's, I can't believe it's <laughs> been that long. But yeah, but it was a, it was a hot mess, so I'm re, rewriting that one. And So yeah, it's uh, I've always got something, some kind of project like that that I'm uh, writing out. Uh, so you and me both. you participate then. in the... Um... Like I know we've had a couple of, in the in the forums at least we've had some uh, like writing writing threads and stuff like that. So were you were you big into that when we were doing that? Oh yeah. In fact, I think uh, didn't we do a um, Nano Remo uh, thread as a part of like a mini thread of that? Uh, is that English? I missed that. What is that? <laughs> uh, I, don't know what that is. Um, I heard Mork. <laughs> National Novel Writing Month is uh, where you ah. um, I think it's the month of November and you uh, challenge yourself to write an entire novel before november ends like from november oh. 1st to yeah wow and uh dude i'll participate in that this november oh, yeah. i'll do it yeah I, I might try it myself now that i'm finally not going to college and it's in november so yeah <laughs> but yeah it's um i think there was a million thread as a part of that and how we kind of uh discussed our techniques and uh how we uh got through the challenges of meeting uh word counts that we put for ourselves through that month and I I pseudo uh, I sort of participated in it, but I had I was already like a couple thousand words in by the time I started, but I did finish a project by that time by the end of um, November at that time. I mm. cannot remember with the, with the life of me which story it was though. Yeah, it was that far <laughs> back. So how how many stories or articles and books do you think you've written then? Uh, I know uh, as far as like full novel length stories, I say at least two. I got another one that uh, is kind of and the words are there, but it's not completed enough to, mm. yeah, and it needs, it's barely even a for, first draft. Yeah. But there's that. And uh, I've done countless short stories. Uh, in fact, I need to start kind of putting them together and uh, putting them online somewhere. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, for sure. If you need any proofreaders. Yeah. Uh, I'll be happy to get some proofreaders. Yeah. I'm I, always... I write a lot of the, well, I've written a lot of the policies and you know announcements and things like that on ssg and i am not a good writer so i have to always have kaz read everything <laughs> i write because everything is spelled wrong and he's like you i think you're just missing words like i don't it doesn't make sense i'm not like, sure what you're trying to say <laughs> here he is a sorry <laughs> yeah i've been there i understand with as the writer and as the proofreader yeah i'm in the same boat i can tell a story but sometimes putting it on paper is very very difficult for me but sometimes it just flows oh yeah knows. no i i totally get it and um there are days when I have all the ideas I want to put down on paper, but it takes me in, I don't know, an hour just to put down a couple sentences just because I can't really uh, put them down exactly Formulate all. Formulate the words, envision. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, having ADHD doesn't help either. No, so, no, yeah. no, it does not. Yeah. I can attest to that as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I think there are many that can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, I have to do a lot of writing for work as a, as a paramedic. You know, we have to we have to do documentation after all of our calls and uh clearly we have to be very professional and objective whenever we write something <laughs> so we can write you, you know we write um what we were told and then we write what we were what we saw and then what kind of treatments and stuff we did so by far though my favorite thing to write is i will say you know either 
patient states and then I can quote the patient or patient's wife or witness states or something like that because then it's not me saying it. It's just whatever they said. <laughs> I, I've read so, some of those and they're hilarious. It's <laughs> so, it's yeah. pretty great. It's pretty great. When I as soon as I can say patient states, then I, I know it's in for a good time. Cause You're in the clear. It, <laughs> right. So then I I just hope that you know somebody in billing or who whoever's going to read these reports gets uh gets a little chuckle out of it, right? Because because some of it I don't have to include, but I do because it's just awesome. Do you <laughs> ever include, use a uh, code or abbreviations like ID ten T error or something like that? <laughs> um, no, we have we have like actual medical abbreviations that that were clear to use, but there's no like um. There was there was one from from back in the day that that probably not not a lot of people even know anymore. Um, we used to say uh, patient uh, was OBS, and so that's in, I think it's before even my time. So it's over like 20 years ago, um, where an OBS patient was organic organic brain syndrome, which essentially <laughs> just meant somebody was crazy. So I don't even know if it's like a real medical term, <laughs> but it was just it was just something like when when I started when I started my career. And the hospitals are like, ah, oh, we got an OBS patient coming out. And I'm like, what is that? And then they're like, oh, it's <laughs> organic brain syndrome. I'm like, okay, that sounds made up. I don't sounds legit true. to me. So, yeah, right. I'll take it. Right. Now I'm kind of wondering if OBS, the streaming software, is aware of their lineage. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so uh, bouncing back over to gaming. So we've seen a lot of consoles come, come and go throughout the years. Um, mm-hmm. And we are just on the precipice of a new console generation first question what are you playing these days second question what are you looking to play when that next generation rolls around uh these days uh my free time has been kind of limited so i've I've been getting with a kind of short games so i've been playing a lot of rocket league lately um because those are you know short games there and fall guys now since i just bought it yeah so rocket league and fall guys are by the way some of my favorite games you we need to play oh sweet yeah send me an invite whenever you see me on I'll, yeah. And I'll sometimes catch uh, an occasional Overwatch match in, just if, if I can get the time in for that. Or um, and uh, oh, Animal Crossing has been my uh, just my relaxation game now. So I, I'll t- sometimes do that before bed, just to you know calm myself down from whatever happened during the day. Okay, and, so uh, I've heard a Nintendo, uh, PC, and potentially Xbox so far. Yeah, yeah, I prefer Xbox because it's more comfortable that okay. way. But I'll play PC okay. if, depending on how the setup goes. Gotcha. Okay. It's nice to have a, uh, uh, like games that are Microsoft made cross platform like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Rocket like League the is. Sea of Thieves. Yep. Yeah, Sea of Thieves is another one I've been trying to get back into. But uh, <laughs> those games, um, you, even a single treasure chest mission will take uh, like 45 minutes just because that's how the game's designed is to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to drain to all of your it. time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, mine is it's kind of it's meant for long sessions. Um, and it's not a bad thing, not not by any stretch. But uh, you know, your ship is not a race race car, so you're naturally going to be sailing across the sea on somewhat of a, I'm not going to say realistic, but a uh, realistic-ish method of sailing by with or without the wind. So and that takes up a lot of time too. So it is. It's just such a chill I gotta game. Gotta get back like, into that. Oh, like I, I enjoy it every time I play, especially when I play with Alias or Mania or, or Toma, like you guys that are just so good and and have played it so much like it it, it's such a just chill game because really i I feel like at least when i played with you guys we don't really run into it's not pvp heavy unless i guess you really want it to be and so it's Uh, unless they find you yeah well you can just (laughs) chill and like again especially playing with somebody like alias you know you're like hey i see a ship out there hey let's go around this way or let's you know let's you know go to this island or that island instead yeah it's, it's really nice i propose that the three of us and Mania go into Sea of Thieves. Two veterans and two, let's call us rookies. Because I haven't yeah. played since a number of the updates. I would love to go and play that game again. But Absolutely. It's, it's very yeah. daunting for me now. I don't know what the hell's going on. I shall help. Yeah, they, they made some, I mean, I think it was good in the beginning, but they made some substantial improvements, and it's just more fun. Yeah, the yeah, tall tales alone the are amazing. And, uh, and they've added so much on top of that, too. Oh, and they added dogs. Dogs are awesome. What? Ooh. Oh, dude, I'm downloading it tonight. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You, you can have pirate pets, and now they just added dogs, uh, I think, last month. Or this month, oh, actually. Oh, it's happening. It's I'm literally downloading this night. Yeah, you can All name right. it and everything. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I downloaded a, uh, uh, not a parrot, but what a macaw or something. I forget what it is. but Yeah, they, they have, have those, too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, had one of those as my pet. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. 
you can actually that's put them awesome. in the cannon and fire them off. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. They seem to be okay. <laughs> they seem to be. Well, you know. No um, so now. are you looking to roll into the next generation, or are you kind of content where you are for now? Oh, I absolutely want to roll into the next generation, especially because I just bought a 4K TV, but I still have a Gen 1 Xbox One, so ah. I can't technically play 4K until I get something like that. Right. But in my Xbox, I love it, but it is on its last legs because it's been having a couple errors lately. Yeah. So and that's why I was so desperate to uh, get in one of those pre-orders, but uh, I just cannot cannot snag one for the Xbox um, the Series X. I hear you. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I do, Halo Infinity. Yep. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. I, so, I was trying hard yeah. for that Series X, and I, I couldn't get it either. I, st- I mean, I still obviously don't have one because I don't think I don't think anybody's opened a second wave yet. So yeah, I'm still on the lookout for those. But uh, I mean, I have I was on the uh, you know the alert list and everything. I have, I had my the app open ready to go, and then mm-hmm. Best Buy delayed it by an hour, and that threw me off. And I tried oh. to go in Microsoft Store, and I I got as far as the credit card information, and then just could not get any further than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I had it in my cart, but then the, it just oh. failed every time. Mm, that's the same uh, thing happened to me. <laughs> I've got a chunk of uh, credit sitting at Best Buy that I, I intend to use for it. See, that's we're going to be, uh, uh, Remy, we're going to going to San Diego. I'll be in San Diego when the uh, Series X drops. So nice. I'm really, I can't even do like a midnight launch or anything. I mean, unless I do it, try to get one in San Diego or something. Tell you what, I'll pick one up. God I'll speak. drive down there and we'll play. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can camp out at midnight in uh, San Diego. Yeah. Same photos. Dude, one of these days, one of these days <laughs> when you go down to San Diego, you got to come up and see the boat. I know. Oh, yeah, you do have a boat, don't you? Mm. Yeah, man, that's that's where I live. So, speaking of your boat, Gambit, yes. I hear you might be a little internet famous these days. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but we're we're working <laughs> on it. I did have a viral post yesterday, which was oh, pretty it was, it was so great. So, <laughs> it... it it, it's just a gif and all you see it uh, you, you know you can't, you don't really know it's just kind of like a white white linen or what you know white something and you see <laughs> it clearly looks like um you know bird feet and then you see finger just kind of poking the feet and then they kind of <laughs> patter 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 around and he pokes it again <laughs> patter 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 and i mean it just goes on and on and you see the the bird I would love to have had video up top and see the <laughs> oh, bird's dude, face. I wish. Like, was he just like, what the hell is going on? What the on? hell is like, happening down there? <laughs> and it was so right, funny. you, you, you got to post that in the mess. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll post it again. Yet. I did post it yeah, yesterday. Shit. but uh, um, And it you know what a really great. funny part of that? So the the post topped out at 55.2K yesterday. Man. Oh, wow. And my favorite comment in that, that thread, there were 500, let me see, 500 and... Oh, dang. 93 comments my favorite one was bro dot 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 to have found you this way by a one mr ssg ghost rider <laughs> oh that's a name i have not heard in a long long time oh man it cracked me up when i saw that i'm like oh dude that's that's just fantastic <laughs> love it uh, but yeah this that actually uh, that post led to twenty thousand views on my facebook or excuse me on my uh, youtube video nice. as well Nice, and, and that was on that's your it. your YouTube channel, so that that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. Man, things are looking good. Yeah, it's awesome. Just, just make sure you post it with sound next time. Was, uh, I'm going to be key. doing that tomorrow. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to re- be reposting it. And say sorry, guys. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, that was. But yeah, uh, the the pitter patter of the feet really makes a difference. Mm. It's fantastic. It's so funny because you just hear him like pitter patter patter <laughs> like <laughs> you know just. <laughs> there's one point where and... he he hops and it's hilarious because <laughs> you see my camera just <laughs> oh man i was laughing my ass off so like is that something that happens often on the boat that has never happened before okay. um really but i have i have so many minute long videos of just things that happen in the marina just like this um and i'm now that i've i've realized the potential of reddit i will be uh <laughs> taking advantage of it <laughs> quite a lot <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so i think i'm going to do a weekly reddit post as well oh nice awesome yeah so. oh man but all right anyway so, back to alias <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh, we, we can talk about that's that right. we gotta want. do some cross promotion every now and then that's fine yeah oh, yeah that's yeah. fine <laughs> um so so you didn't grow up on a boat i'm assuming <laughs> no i grew up in the middle of farmland okay and i still kind of live there too except it's farmland next to the marsh so welcome to florida 
yeah. So you you grew up there and you've lived lived there most of your life then? Uh, well, I li- born and raised in Georgia, and uh, now I'm pretty much in Florida. So, or like where I'm right on the border, but yeah. Okay. What about uh, what about school? Where'd you go to uh, school at? Um, no, it was just uh, like smaller high school or not smaller elementary middle schools. High school was large-ish, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I um, graduated with honors, so that was awesome. Nice, nice. But um, I, do. I gotta ask, yeah. what does what does largish mean to a Floridian? Uh, um, actually, I'm not sure because I haven't seen. It's definitely not as large as like Miami, but it's more like okay. 600 graduating class. Oof. Yeah, we had, we had like 420 something in mind, so. Okay. Yeah. We had 1200. <laughs> okay, so you win. <laughs> but that's Southern California, man. It's it's. Okay. Yeah. We're we're sense. we're packed in tight down here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was high, Is your high was, school like the size of Rhode Island or what? Yeah, it wasn't small. It was pretty sprawling. <laughs> Did it like serve the entire county, or is they have broken up into? No, schools? no, that was just for one one city. Oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. it was it was one high school for the entire city. Oh yeah, and yeah, I'm not from Atlanta where uh, like there, I don't know how many high schools are up there now, but uh, they're yeah, they're, yeah, I'm sure there are quite a few more. Yeah. So sorry, I didn't mean to derail you, but uh, no, go on. Cool. Where'd you go to college? Yeah, in college. Uh, in fact, I um, went to you know small agricultural college because. Um, I and mean, it's what I could afford, and this is what I could get started with since I didn't, couldn't figure out what my major was at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, in fact, that got me some interesting connections because uh, that's where I was working, uh, you know, as my first librarian gig uh, when I found SSG. So uh, <laughs> kinda, it's kind of surreal going back to, uh, you know, the college you worked at and some of the professors there, they recognize you before you recognize them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's unusual. <laughs> So what yeah. about um, uh, so what about the rest of your college career? So do you have you have your master's, don't you? Uh, yes, that's because okay. um, uh, you do need a master's degree to be a librarian. So I uh, got my associates in psychology because that does interest me, but I did not want to be a psychologist. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and that's about the time when I heard that there was a shortage of librarians in Georgia, and I thought, okay, that might give me some job security. So. Uh, I needed bachelor's before I could get my master's, and I was able to afford it um, thanks to having a very generous parents who assured me that as long as I made good grades, they will help me with my tuition, which I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because I did not have a job at the time, so that was definitely awesome. And um, so I got my bachelor's in history because I knew that I could uh, work that up with uh, into a library and science degree because I was also interested in history, so that definitely helped. Mm-hmm. So got that, and uh, so yeah, here I am. I uh, got <laughs> masters there, and uh, so what? What is your masters in then? Uh, it is the full title is uh, MLIS, Master of Library and Information Science. I did so, not know that was a thing. Oh yeah, so I can I'm yeah. certified to be a librarian in uh, at the, there I was college, but I can do public library too. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie, I didn't realize you had to have a master's to be a librarian. Yep. I had no idea. I did not know at the time until I uh, <laughs> started into a bachelor program, and then uh, that's when they I learned that okay, I need a master's to get this. So let's go ahead, let's get this. Uh, see if I can blend this bachelor's degree into a library science degree. So yeah, kind that's of awesome. work that out. So have you gotten much of a chance to go uh, beyond Georgia and Florida? Um, I considered it, but um, I also wanted to stay in. Uh, in this region, just because um, you can really get some really good retirement packages if you stick <laughs> with um, like the university system, the university system of Georgia, and uh, that sort of thing. So as long as um, as long as you're staying within those programs, you're building um, you're building retirement credit, and uh, that really they really these specific programs they have up here, I think it's called TRS, uh, that they really help you out whenever you're um, you know coming to retirement age. So I wanted to keep as close as I could to that, so I could still get that in those benefits that's awesome so yeah. are there any like great librarian stories like are librarians like secretly like crazy partiers or anything <laughs> i wish i could say yes but uh what happens in the library stays in the Ooh, library is okay, that okay. Ooh, yeah. i will, I will right, say this right. though you do get some Juicy. strange requests i remember there was a uh, at the time i was a uh interlibrary fulfillment request you know public librarian mm-hmm. uh well public services librarian and um 
for some reason we have a like a five volume collection on Voodoo, and people kept on checking that out a lot. I'm not sure why. <laughs> we were missing three of them by the time I left because they were that popular. But um, yeah, and there's this uh, one person I don't know who it was. It was from a different county, but they requested uh, like two of the books, and they um, we did not have them because they were checked out at the time. So I had to reject the request, and then the same person came back with uh, another request for a childcare book. And I'm thinking, wait, that's a very dis- drastic change. I'm starting to get concerned here. <laughs> but, uh, You're not mixing these two things, right, sir? I'm hoping not. <laughs> but uh, don't I, and child I don't care. really <laughs> didn't really have a chance or a way to to clarify. Oh, so I just fulfill the request and hope for the best. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. have you ever gotten an opportunity to travel outside of the states? Uh not for business, but I have traveled. I went, I went on a cruise once. That was awesome. Got to nice. uh, go to Grand Cayman, went to Cozumel, and uh, that was really cool because we got to see some ancient uh, Mayan ruins. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, nice. I'm a history buff, so that really uh, – or a history buff and a writer, so that really uh, uh, hit, hit a lot with me. Uh, went tubing in Belize, which is fun because I like water. So Ooh. definitely, yeah. Awesome. So that was a really cool time. And uh, But I'm always open for, uh, like, travel elsewhere. I've always wanted to visit Australia. And uh, you know, visit Japan, like just some a different culture that uh, that I'm used to, just to see what it's like, you know, mm-hmm. in other regions like that. Well, we have a uh, an emeritus knight that lives in uh, in Osaka, Japan. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. SSG Kinetic though. Larry. Oh yeah. Is that Bakdoi yeah. or is that someone else? No, that's a uh, uh, SSG Kinetic was his name. Oh right. Okay, I remember now. Yeah, he came around along the same time as. Uh, White Wolf, which was at the time Gallifrey. Um, okay. And a handful of other people. I don't recall who else, but I, I remember very distinctly they were in the same Halo 4 game. Halo 4? Yeah, Halo 4 game. Sounds yeah. about right. It was yeah. Knights versus Recruits. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> You're right. And uh, Mike, White Wolf, has uh, yet to forgive me for shooting him in the face with a cannon of the uh, tank. <laughs> Twice? So, <laughs> uh, more than he that. He probably deserved it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he brought that up a number of times when we were when we were uh, heavy into <laughs> Sons of Glitches. But, yeah, I, think, uh, I thought thought betrayals were uh, like just part of the culture here. So it's like oh no no no, it was knights versus recruits. He was still a recruit. I was I was oh, very right. warranted to shoot him in the face. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember those knight versus recruit nights. I uh, I got my got my tail handed to me by DC when she was first recruited. Uh, oh she, she man, was coming in she from was the a, she was a ringer. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. She is so her good. and. Uh, yeah. Uh, who was who was the other recruit that would just destroy us? Raz, Raz would destroy yeah, us when we yeah. played. Oh God, those yeah. two! You do not want to be on the other team. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> good times. Uh, yeah, good time. I miss Halo, man. We got to. That's why that. I never, I never talked smack about uh, about recruits being recruits, just because oftentimes they were way more skilled than me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm a, I, I wholeheartedly admit I love Halo. I'm I'm a diehard Halo fan. But I suck compared to the rest of the world. Essentially, I suck. My group of friends, I'm great. But once you put me online, man, I will get stomped immediately. And that's why that's why I hang out with you guys because uh, I'm the same way. <laughs> so I don't feel as bad. But but I will get you there in a in yeah. one piece. In there a war you go. Home. Yeah, I, I, that's you know that's one of the things I loved about you know TTL and then you know after we started SSG that I love about that is like it's not about the competitive nature necessarily. I, th- I think we're all competitive, right? But but that's not typically when we get on and play Monday Night Halo and stuff back in the day. Like, it wasn't the sole purpose of, like, if we don't win, everybody's going to have a sour attitude, right? Like, yeah. It was, no, dude. We, we yeah. would have eight losses in a row and we're all laughing and having a good time and doing sweet jumps and, you know. I mean, Hell, just, yeah. Once you get to that yeah. point, you're like, well, let's, Absolutely. You know, let's just play. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's why I've stuck with you guys for so long is because you're so – cool about that and that you don't yeah. mind you don't take it personally like that mm-hmm. nah and, uh, i'm a filthy Where's casual the fun in so that? That's, i live for that so, yeah. <laughs> damn straight yeah, i was just i was watching a bunch of my uh, old um, clips that i have on youtube i've got a, just a smattering of like completely random stuff that i put on youtube but i have a bunch of old ssg clips and it reminded me when we were just talking about uh, halo reach because i have a, a bunch of clips from halo reach and i think they're probably all from the reach beta um <laughs> but there's a there's a bunch of um clips in there um, there's several from like me and Dalkaeus because him and I are both armor lock buddies for the win. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
uh, <laughs> a bunch of clips from that. But then there's a bunch of other uh, like flag flag caps and bomb plants and stuff where, of course, you know, Remy was driving or picking me up and stuff. And it's man, it was just it was just good times. Good times. I, I yeah, good it. times. And it was neat how we had our own. Uh, specializations and roles within the yeah. uh, well back at the time we did because uh, we knew what we were good at and we kind of played to those strengths whenever we teamed up yes yeah, so we beautiful. Did have um uh and, and halo was really the only game it, it translated to but but halo we had the honor guard uh which is me and alias and so we would always you know we would defend the objective right so yeah. we'd hold the flag hold the bomb plant um yeah. you know yeah. jay would always have a shotgun it was the only time when i was good yeah. with the shotgun was when i was defending the flag <laughs> uh, and then we had the um, uh, cavalry. Uh, cavalry. The cavalry. Yep. So sure. Remy, that was you know that was Gambit. So you know you got people that are that are driving flying vehicles, that kind of stuff. You had archers, so they were people that mm-hmm. had uh, snipers, um, power weapons, you know, yeah. rocket launchers, the, the Spartan laser, things like that. And then yep. um, oh. I don't know. We don't have to, the, we don't uh, talk rogues. about the last group. Not the rogues. <laughs> <laughs> the, the red guys, whatever they were. So, yeah. the raiders, Assault raiders, people. that's what they were. Yeah, yeah the raiders. And yeah. they were the yeah. front line. They were the, the meat shield, as yep. it were. Oh, always, <laughs> always pushing the objective. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping so, the pressure on the, uh, energy, God, the skirmishing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just so nice because, like you said, it was always, um, it would just keep track of, you know, everybody had a role, right? So, and we we had it defined by color. So, you know, you could choose your Spartans' color. So we had the blue, green, red, gray, and so you would know, like, oh, he's blue. He's going to be in the base. I'm not. I'm not even going to bother asking him to get in the hog because I know what he's going to be doing, right? So, yeah, um, right. Or you. Or I'm not going to take the shotgun when I see him running toward it. Right. Or yeah. Hey, there's somebody in green. I'm not going to pick up the sniper. You know, like, you know, yeah. that's that's what they're going to do. Um, or you so pick it, up the sniper and run it to them. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which. Which that would happen, like that was that's such a great example of, of something that would happen. Where could you imagine playing, even, even with a couple of random people on your team, and somebody just giving yeah. you ammo or giving you a weapon like that would just never <laughs> no, happen. God, no. Yeah, even yeah. on your own team, you're right. Yeah, right. Or or even yeah. just just with friends of yours. Like if I was playing with friends from high school, nobody's gonna be like, oh hey, let me bring the sniper for you. They'd be like, uh, yeah. piss yeah. off, I'm taking the sniper. I'd be like, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I've lost count of the number of times um, either you or someone else uh, went to the base and dropped off a shotgun for me so I could keep defending it without having to mm-hmm. leave my post. Yep. And um, yep. that was fun. There, were, to... <laughs> there was a small group of us. Um, I know Booker was amongst them, but there were, there were a number of us that would make that part of the objective, uh, go after the enemy sniper just to get their weapon and then bring it over. And yeah. it was, when I dropped off a raider, that was what I was doing. I was trying to get their weapons to bring them home. <laughs> yeah. And it was just, raider, that's what they were. So yeah, much that's right. yeah. yeah, the Red Raiders. But, uh, so we're running low on time here. Um, but let's ask, since you are a librarian, I want to know what your Desert Island book would be. What's a book that you've read numerous times and you could read for the foreseeable future? It could be a series oh. of books as well. Hmm, I think uh, one that stands out to me was one that uh, really, uh, really, really charged my creative uh, drive back when I was, um, you know, starting to get back, starting to get into writing. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a fantasy novel from Australian author Paul Kidd, and um, he's a really cool guy. He's a uh, he's been writing since like the 80s, if I think. And he's done RPGs and books and stuff like that. And um, there was a book he wrote called A Whisper of Wings. And uh, it's it's kind of uh, obscure, but it's neat though. It's um, but it's uh, this kind of tribal fantasy sort of uh, story. That's uh, and it's it's kind of hard to describe with the time we have left. But uh, that's that <laughs> is the book that I would bring with me, just because uh, it's the only book I've read more than once. To be honest. Really? It's, uh, yeah. So because it because uh, a lot of the fantasy themes that uh, it has goes just blends with my style. So. That's nice. awesome. So I'm gonna have to st- have to look that up. Yeah. So since you're stuck here with Remy and I, have you read the Dark Tower books? <laughs> it is on my list. That's you know how I told you about my bookshelf being <sighs> packed books. That's uh-huh. the, yeah. That's uh, the ones that's oh. still waiting to be read. Oh, I have it on reserve. My heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. My entire <laughs> right arm is tattooed in in reference to the Dark Tower. I do that. I do remember. Uh, yeah. You, you got to read one, it. I was tempted to see the movie, but I want to read their book first. <laughs> Yeah, I would. No, it was, I would it was real that, bad. That's a good it was idea. Real bad. <laughs> I didn't, I it often is. I didn't so I've heard. The movie as much. Well, okay. Um, Alias, we'll talk about it once you've um, read and seen 
that there's one reason that I I can give it a very very I don't know the word for it reluctant I guess is good pass <laughs> um, just because they, there's one small detail that they put in that made it okay not great no, no, but okay acceptable no spoilers <laughs> no I, that's no. that's as far as I'm going but okay. uh, yeah oh and uh, while we're on the topic of books not to completely change the subject but uh, to answer your earlier question about the last uh, book I wrote I read I think that'd be Ready Player One Oh, yeah, good right. one. Oh, oh, there's a new one coming out in a couple months. Yeah, oh, that's Player right. Two, right. And, uh, Ready Player Two. Yeah, that's, that's November. Uh, I'm <gasps> looking forward to that one too. Oh shit, that's next month. It's like, welcome back to your nope, childhood. Not next month. Here's all these Close. 80s references. Dude, awesome. I'm yeah. so excited about that. Oh, anyway, all right. Yeah. Well, is there anything you want to leave the audience with? Anything you're working on that you want to uh, promote? Like the book, the title of your book when it comes out. Uh, there is a uh, kind of like ancient fantasy book that. Uh, the one that I've already completed that's still looking for publishers called uh, mm-hmm. RN Connections, A A U R A N. Um, okay. It's uh, let's see if I can sum it up with what time we have left. Uh, it's trying to take the fantasy trope of you know there is this uh, prophecy about a chosen one, but this time the prophecy is about a chosen one who will destroy the world. And when you ever you find out that you're that chosen one, you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I stop this from happening? Because I don't want to be. Hmm. The destroyer of the world. I don't want to be chosen. I don't want to be that guy. So, yeah. So this is how this and it takes place in this fantasy world when the entire world is out to get them, and they're this is not who I am, and so they're trying to figure out uh, who who even made this prophecy and how can I stop it. Interesting. That sort of thing. From that nice. perspective, yeah. that's fun. Okay. All right. Well, let me know yeah. when that comes out, man. I'd love to read it. Absolutely. I will 100% buy it. What about self publishing? Have you not? Uh, have you thought I about did. doing that? I did once, and that uh, um, I was in serious need of a proofreader and an editor. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm glad that I did it, and uh, I, I just like the story that I made, but it, it is um, very evident, uh, which is why I'm hesitant to say the title. It's very evident that uh, I was, this was my first time writing anything major like that. Hey, you guys, so go somewhere. It, that is very true. And I might uh, might name drop it later on, but right now I'm not quite confident I want people to see that as their first work from me just yet. That's all right. All right, I'll read your uh, your other one first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Then I'll come knocking for that title. All right. Uh, Jay, you, you want to lead us out? Yeah. Well, guys, we appreciate you listening. Uh, Alias, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Yeah. Remy, it's good to have you back, buddy. So, yeah. guys, it's been great. we will see you in the next episode. Later. Take See care. Ya. No, peace.